Okay, tonight we're talking about dual credit at Big Spring High School. What is what is dual credit? Dual credit is where you get a high school credit and a college credit for most of the classes that you're taking. Howard College provides high school students with a quality educational experience. At Big Spring ISD, students may take courses at the high school or at the college here in Big Spring or online. It depends on the class that you're taking and your grade level options. Those are different according to each grade level. Howard College does do dual credit with several different ISDs and CISDs throughout the state of Texas. Uh, we have about 27 total. Here's a listing of most of them. And we also do dual credit for homeschool. All of the classes that you're taking from Howard College can basically be broken down into two different categories. There's academic transfer courses, and then there's career and te technical courses. The academic transfer courses are the classes that most people need for a general studies degree or most degrees. These classes are classes like English, government, or English 1301, English 1302, English 2322, government, speech, uh, psychology. These are classes that pretty much everybody needs as long as it's needed in your degree. What that means is sometimes people take college algebra, which back in the olden days when I took college, college algebra was needed for everybody. But now there are several majors that do not need college algebra. They need a business math or stats or something like that. We can't get college algebra to count for that. So what we're doing now is we are trying to assign a Howard College counselor to every high school so we can be sure you take the classes that you need for college. The state of Texas does not want students taking classes that will not work for their specific major. So we're doing the best that we can to make sure you don't do that. Now, people do change majors, so it's not 100% foolproof. Uh, on the academic transfer courses, students receive high school and college credit for those. Now, there are TSI requirements that might need to be met. I'll talk about that a little more here in a little bit. We also offer career and technical courses. On these, most of these do have a high school crossover. Big Spring High School has a really good crossover sheet that tells you which classes will cross over, what high school credit you get, et cetera. There is no TSI for these classes at this time. The thing about these classes is they may not transfer to whatever college you're going to. They probably will if, say, for instance, you're taking criminal justice classes and you're going to Texas Tech in a criminal justice degree, they probably will transfer, but there's no law that requires them to. There are some classes in the career and technical courses like Cosmo and CNA, those are two that you work towards a certificate, those are two classes that they don't have quote unquote excused absences. What does that mean? Well, what that means is the state of Texas or the licensing body for Cosmo or CNA requires you to actually physically be in a classroom a certain number of hours. And you have to be there that many hours or you cannot pass it. So a lot of the times, as long as you're doing good and you're trying, if you need a little extra time the instructors will work with you to get your extra time but you really need to make sure you're there most of the time there is a big time investment in those classes now you'll save a lot of money too by taking them because the savings is tremendous the cna class for most students cost about eight hundred dollars so uh, i'll talk a little bit more about the fees that you would have to pay if you take that a little later in the presentation Howard College dual credit courses are taught by instructors with appropriate college teaching credentials. College rigor and expectations are in all of these classes. Yes, you're getting high school credit for them, but they are college classes and they're going to be a little tougher. There's more involved. You're going to have to study more. You're going to have to do more work. You're going to have to go to class. You're going to have to participate. So be sure you understand that. Yes, it is a high school credit, but it's a college class, so it could be a little tougher. Students must adhere to college policies regardless of class location. The state of Texas sees all dual credit students as college students. They don't see you as high school students. A lot of the rules and regulations and stuff are different for college than high school. We'll go over some of those tonight. The rest are in the handbook. 
the college does work with high school officials to try to meet the classes that you need in order to get your high school credits and possibly a certificate or be on your way to an associate's degree. I think Big Spring High School has six or seven students that are probably going to get their associate's degree next year before they get their high school diploma. Now, this is pretty tough. There's a lot involved in doing that, but if you're interested in that after you get going, we can talk about how that could happen. Be sure to read the student handbook. There's a link there. Now here's where we have a little bit of a gray area. The first eligibility requirement is students must meet TSI guidelines to prove college readiness. Now the reason it has an asterisk next to it is, as you know, we haven't been able to go to school since uh, spring break. So that caused a problem. You didn't take your STAR, possibly if you're a 10th grader and that's one way we can get you in. And usually I go up to Big Spring High School and give the TSI, but we were unable to do that. So right now, a few of you have probably taken your ACT. If you have and you can use that, let's do that. Your counselors will know probably if you've taken it. But it's good to get your ACT on your Howard College record anyway. That way you have everything on one transcript. Whenever you get to go ready to go to college, everything's on that official document and it's easier for you. You just have your transcript sent. That takes care of your ACT, your TSI, everything's all on that one piece of paper as well as your Howard College classes. So if you have an ACT, let's go ahead and get that on there. There's several options going around. We may have to do some testing in the summer. We may have to do some remote testing. There's some alternative plans as well. I don't know. Uh, you'll need to be watching your dual credit web page and, and I believe your counselors have a remind thing where once we know something they can probably tell you on that as well. But for our purposes right now we're not going to worry about it so much. We'll worry about that as it comes. The next step is you must receive permission from the high school principal or counselor and your parent or guardian. They all have to sign a form saying it's okay for you to take dual credit. You must be a high school student. The class load is determined by the ISD. Now we don't recommend you taking more than one class your first semester in college. Some people might can handle two, but that's a Howard College recommendation. It's set by your school how many you can actually take each semester. There are several steps to applying to Howard College. The first is to apply via applytexas.org. That's a really cool site because once you fill that in, you save your password and everything. And whenever you get ready to apply to Texas Tech or UT or A&M or wherever, all of that information you have in there can transfer over to those colleges. Now I will tell you, uh, Howard College does not have an application fee and the other ones do, but all your information will be in there and you'll just be able to transfer it all over. You also have to submit completed paperwork. Uh, the transcript will actually be supplied by the school, so you won't have to worry about that. And we'll talk about the deadlines for this a little later in the slideshow. Admission and registration is coordinated through the high school counselor's office. And your high school counselor, well, they have actually provided you with some really good handouts that tell you all of this, uh, the ISD rules and some eligibility requirements for taking classes. Now there are some tips that I want to share with you for being successful in college courses. The first one you would think wouldn't even need to be on there, but don't miss class. You need to be at class all the time. So if you're taking classes at Howard College, you need to be to that classroom before the class starts. Some students are kind of guilty about stopping at 7-Eleven or trying to go to Sonic and getting something first and coming in late. There's a big possibility if you do that, by the time you get to the class, if it's after time, the door's gonna be locked, you're not gonna get in, and you're gonna be counted absent for that day. So you do need to make sure you get there on time. Be there on time, be ready for class. You need to read, print, and study the syllabus for every class. The syllabus is basically the rules and regulations for each individual class. Every one of them's different. Some college instructors are very laid back, some are very, very, very by the book. Some of them say there is no late work accepted. You need to read those policies and understand them. If it's in the syllabus, there's really nothing you can do to, even to fight it. You can, uh, like you can appeal grades and stuff like that at the end of the semester, but if it's in the syllabus, you've seen the syllabus since day one. You went into the class understanding that's what it was, and if you didn't like it, 
you probably shouldn't have been in that class. You need to make sure you read it and study it and understand it. I mean, there's not all, there's not unreasonable things in them, but each instructor does have different expectations. They have different grading policies. They have attendance policies and participation policies. Sometimes if you're taking just online, they count attendance by how many times you log in and how long you're logged in, or they may make you do a discussion question where you have to answer some questions in a discussion forum. Just be sure you understand that. Also understand Blackboard where the online thing, it keeps track. Every time you log in, it keeps track how long you logged in. It even does your computer uh, ID number where you logged in at. It keeps track of everything. So, and sometimes people will say, oh, I, I, I did this and this and this, but the instructor can see they haven't even logged in in two weeks. So be sure you understand that on that. Do not wait too long before getting help if help is needed. Howard College has many different ways to help you. The way you would want to start would be to talk to your instructor. They may be able to help you. There may be some easy thing that you're just not getting. They have office hours on their syllabus as well as an email address. You can call them during their office hours or you can email them or you can also go to the tutoring center up at the college. You have, we do supply free tutoring and online tutoring, which I'll go over a little bit later on as well. Be sure you keep your high school counselor in the loop whenever you're having issues too. There are deadlines for dropping a course. A F will not disappear from your college transcript. If by chance you're not going to pass a college course, you have you need to drop it. If this does not happen automatically. You have to initiate it. You need to talk to your Big Spring High School counselor first, and they have a form they can fill out, and they'll send it to me. The, there is a problem with that, especially for graduating seniors. You're getting your English credits and things like that, and if you're not going to pass that English class, that could jeopardize your graduation. So you need to talk to your counselor first and see if there's time for credit recovery for you to get the high school credit, if that's even allowed. The best thing to do would be just go ahead and study hard and not have to worry about that. There's only a small percentage of students that this even applies to, but we want to make sure you understand. Remember you're taking a college course that may have different vacation days from the high school. The calendars do not always align. You saw that big list of schools that we have. Every one of them has different teacher work days, uh, snow day, makeup days, student holiday days. There's different Thanksgiving breaks, everything. And it is impossible for Howard College to match up with all of them. So there's a chance that some of your days up at the high school, it may be a teacher work day up at the high school, but your Howard College class may still meet. Now, if the class is at Big Spring High School, two of them are, or three. If those happen on a day that you have a teacher's work day, those don't usually meet because those teachers will just not come that day and give you extra work the other day to make up for it or something. But if your English class that's at Howard College or your government class that's at Howard College is on one of those days, it's quite possible that you will have to have, go to class that day at the college. Do not assume that you are excused from a college course for high school functions. Everybody's involved in lots of different things. Uh, you might be in FFA, you might be in basketball, football, drama, band, choir. There's many different things that you may be in in high school, which is great. However, the college teachers don't have a clue what your schedule is. You, if, they're, if you're going to be gone for a game or something on a day that you have class, you need to talk to your college instructors before you're absent and make sure they know. Some of them will give you some work to do before. Some of them may say, well, you need to take the test early before that, or they may let you take it later if there's a test that day. It all depends. But communication is key. You need to be sure you communicate with all of your instructors. Now, here's a problem that really most of the people that get slammed on it is graduating seniors during the spring. I think they get senioritis and get lazy. Go online and search for a paper or try to get a paper from somebody else who's turned it in previously. Please, 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 please do not do that. A lot of the papers, the majority actually, are run through a program called Turn It In. This is a plagiarism checker. It's comparing your paper against millions of other papers. Papers that were turned in from Big Spring High School 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 
papers all over the internet, papers that were in different languages and translated to English. Whenever the instructor runs your paper through, it comes back and it's colored in lots of different colors. And like it might be colored orange in one side and it will say original paper, August 15th, 2002, Big Spring High School student, blah, blah, blah. So, and it will be highlighted. So you need to be very careful not to do that. So it can cause you at universities, if you get caught doing that, you can get kicked out of college for that. They'll keep your money, they'll put a little mark next to your record that says you cheated, you'll get kicked out, you won't get your money back. And if you try to go to another university, that will follow you. So be sure you don't do that. Uh, every syllabus does have a plagiarism policy in it, so read over that. Here's some information specific to Big Spring High School. All of this is copied from documents that you're going to have access to, and you can print and have a copy up for yourself. Actually, I believe you sign one of them when you agree to all of this. For Big Spring High School purposes, the student must be in good standing with the high school credits, EOC scores, and attendance to sign up for college courses. All Howard College requirement admissions must be met. That's what we talked about earlier, a lot of the ones that I mentioned. And this is kind of big. High school accommodations do not automatically carry over for college classes. It's a completely different thing. So you have lots of different, if you have special accommodation in high school classes, you as the student need to talk to the Howard College ADA representative each semester before class starts to see what accommodations can be made for college classes. And you must do it before the semester starts. If you wait till the minute, it, I mean, to the middle of the semester to talk to them, it doesn't go back in time to fix anything. It will carry forward, but anything in the past is already done. So it's very important that you do that prior to the semester. Done. You need to remember that whenever you go to university as well, because everything's different. And you will have to do it at the beginning of each semester because they send your paperwork to each teacher each semester according to whatever that you agree on. In order to take dual credit, you do have to complete the Apply Texas application. And you'll see that I've highlighted some due dates on here. These due dates are pretty important. You have to have completed this by May 26th. The Big Spring High School dual credit registration form has to be turned back into the counselors by the 26th. The dual credit agreement is due by the 26th. The Howard College parent student agreement is due by the 26th. Now, if you're taking a class at Howard College, you will need to have proof of a bacterial meningitis shot. That is due by August 3rd. A $50 deposit does need to be paid to Big Spring High School for general courses. This is due by August 3rd. If you're taking Cosmo, that class is very expensive. There's a lot of stuff that have to be has to be bought. The high school, your I mean, luckily your high school pays for a lot of stuff for you. Of all those schools that we saw before, there are very few that pay for everything. Actually, only two, Big Spring and one other one. And the other one doesn't pay for as much as Big Spring does. So y'all are very lucky. You really need to take advantage of that if you can. And thank your school board members for doing that for you. The Cosmo does have a hundred dollar deposit that needs to be paid. Uh, any student that wants to drop a course, you need to visit with your counselor, your grade level counselor. Now this is on CNA classes. If you're taking a CNA class, there's some different things you're going to have to do. We are going to give you a scholarship to cover the tuition for that class, which is worth about five or $600, that scholarship. Now there are some things you're going to have to pay for yourself. In late July, you probably need to contact me. My email address is there and get the background check information. You have to do a background and drug test. It's required by the CNA certification people. This has to be done in the 25 days prior to the first day of class. The first day of class is Monday, August 24th. You cannot wait until after you go to class to do this. In the past, we've kind of been kind of flexible on this, but unfortunately, some people have taken advantage of it and not gotten it. And at the middle of the semester, they still didn't have it. And then at the end of the semester, they still didn't have it. So now the policy is you have to have it 
or you're going to get dropped out of the class. You cannot start the class until that is into the Howard College. You need to get this taken care of the first week or two of August. There's several places in town that do, do it. it. I think they just pull, use a hair for the drug test and the background thing is online. Last year, it was 100 to $125. I don't know for sure what it's gonna cost this year. It's probably about the same, but if you're gonna take that class, you might wanna start saving some money now. About a, save 125, you're probably gonna be pretty safe. You will have to pay this at that time. There is also a test fee for CNA that is the state testing fee, what the state charges for the test, and that is $110. That'll have to be paid to the college before you start the class. We give this money to the state pretty close after you give it to us. So this, even if you drop the class, is not refundable. So be sure you understand if you take this class, you have to pay that fee and you can't get it back but it does make it to where it's easy at the end of the semester. We used to have you pay for it at the end of the semester, but many people didn't have any money then, and it caused issues because they couldn't test. So that's the reason they do it this way now. There's a $10 insurance fee on that class as well. Big Spring High School will cover the fees for courses from the approved dual credit list taken during the school calendar year. These courses are listed on the sheet that you can see on the web page with the agreement form. Big Spring High School will not cover any fees for any flex or summer courses, even if they are offered during our the school calendar year, which means they may allow you to take some classes that you can get out of the way and do it at a cheaper price, but you'll be getting college credit only, no high school credit and they won't pay for those. You will get a discounted rate on that, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Students who take courses outside of the approved course offering or outside of the calendar year will be required to register and pay on their own. You will have a Howard College dual credit counselor that's assigned to you, and that's who you'll talk to about that. That'll happen in the fall. You don't have one yet. Right now, you, every, all that goes through me. These courses will not be included on the high school transcript or calculated in the GPA. In order to take courses outside the approved course offering, students must speak to the designated house, Big Spring High School College Counselor at HC to register. Payment for these classes is due a minimum of five business day before the class starts. If registering the week before classes, payment is due when registering. Uh, in accordance with the Texas Education Code mandating necessary instructional minutes, Big Spring High School requires all students to physically be in attendance at the high school, a minimum of five periods each day. Big Spring High School encourages all dual credit students to visit with their high school counselor prior to registering, completing any college courses in order to ensure optimal educational experience while enrolled at Big Spring High School. Students who drop or fail a course will be required to reimburse the high school for course fees before enrolling in any future dual credit students. So, I'll go over what it's actually costing in a little while so you know what they're paying. Students who want to drop a course must visit with their grade level counselor to do so. Due to the high cost of the Cosmo kit, a $100 deposit is due. This is non-refundable. If Cosmo is dropped or failed along, pay back what they paid, which is $776. If not repaid, there will be a hold placed on your transcript and the diploma until it is repaid. Some courses have state testing fees, which we talked about. CNA has the three fees that I mentioned. First is your background and drug tech check, about $125. Then you have your state testing fee, about $110, and then an insurance fee of $10 a semester. So that's the fees for that. Cosmo has a $10 insurance fee. If the course has these, the students will need to pay these prior to the first day of class. Okay, so now, so you know what Big Spring High School is paying. One three-hour class for anyone who lives in Howard County is $194. For people living outside of Howard County, it's $280 for one class. If you take a second class, it's $388. That's two three-hour classes. A third class would be nine hours usually. That's $482. 
basically the first class is $194 and each class after that it's $48 per college hour. The majority of college classes that you will be taking are three college hours. So 48 times three is 154. So if you added 194 plus 148 dollars for each hour that's what it is for each additional class now the next thing you have to do is books and things like that which we'll talk about that in just a minute the classes like uh, criminal justice welding computer and business that cna one and several other career technical classes we do award at this time a howard college scholarship to pay the tuition for those classes so you or the high school would not be paying this amount for those classes we're going to award you a scholarship now we're very similar to what big spring high school does if you fail or drop it you may no longer be eligible for that scholarship in the future you're not going to be able to get that at that scholarship rate anymore you're going to have to pay the regular dual credit price also what you need to know is dual credit is greatly reduced take as many classes as you can for dual credit for a regular out of howard county student to take one class at howard college it's about 500 dollars. so even the 280 that the out of howard county people pay it's a lot better deal students who are responsible for paying their own tuition that means if you're taking it outside of the approved list that Howard, that uh, Big Spring High School has done, or if you had failed a class in the past, you may have to pay for it as well. Uh, you will have to pay prior to the first day of class. There will be a different date than that on your uh, statement, but the absolute latest is Friday, August 21st at noon. The offices close at three that day, and it's kind of hard to get through on the phone after three because everybody's trying to pay at the last minute. You can pay online as well. You also need your textbooks prior to the first day of class as well. You can contact the Howard College Bookstore at that phone number there to see what books are needed. Now, don't do that just yet. You need to wait probably till July. They don't have the fall list up yet. Here's some student expectations from Big Spring High School. You need to stay up to date with all requirements of the course, assignments, readings, projects, etc. All of this is inside your Blackboard shell. You can read all of that and the instructor will tell you as well. Communicate with the instructor about any issues that may prevent completion of course requirements. Students are expected to pass all dual credit courses in which they are enrolled with no less than a 70 grade average. Dual credit classes are weighted and treated as honors courses. Textbooks. Students will acknowledge the book they receive for courses new or used is in good condition, clean, lightly marked, and fully in a fully resellable condition. You agree to return the books lightly marked and in fully resellable condition on or before the return due date. Students accept all responsibility for risk of loss and agree to pay for replacement costs and fees of books listed if they are not returned by the due date for any reason. And I will warn you, some books are 200 or more dollars, so you don't want to lose them, take care of them. Students will acknowledge that if the books are not returned by the return date, their student record is subject to an academic hold, which will prevent the ability to enroll in courses, add or drop a course, the release of transcripts, and the receipt of a diploma. So it's very important that you be sure to follow that. Students agree that Big Spring High School reserves the right to deny future opportunities to use Big Spring High School college textbooks should they fail to adhere to the terms and conditions stated above in this section. Big Spring High School only supplies books for courses that are on the approved list. Any textbooks, codes, supplies, etc. needed for courses outside of the approved list must be purchased by the student. HC requires textbooks in the first week of class. If you have any questions about dual credit classes, you can email me at dsparks at howardcollege.edu. That phone number is really not too good right now because I'm not in the office, haven't been there for a while. Sometimes they go to a voicemail and it goes to email, but it doesn't really work real well. So let's not count on that working. So use the email. And I'm going to look over here in the chat, see if there's any questions. There's no questions written in chat yet. If you have any questions, post them here, Ms. McWilliams can answer some of them. Uh, I'll answer some a little later and we'll also take questions at the very end also. So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some different web pages and things that are helpful for you. The main Howard College webpage at Howard College EDU is your starting point for almost everything that you need. One of the cool things we have right now is the jumpstart rate. The jumpstart rate is a special deal that we do for all seniors who graduate from high school. So if you know any seniors that graduated this year, they're eligible to get dual credit rates this summer for summer one and summer two. It's not really dual credit rates anymore. They're not dual credit. They would have to talk to an advisor at the college and they can knock a class or two out of the way at those greatly reduced rates. This is available to everybody, even if you didn't take dual credit at Howard College. So if you know any seniors that want to get a class or two out of the way, that's a good way to do it. Some other things you need to know on this first page is my HC. Right down here above this little housey looking thing, it says my HC. If you click that, it takes you to the portal to Howard College, basically, the student portal. Once you get a username and password, you can log in right up here at the top. And whenever you get inside there, you can do things like degree shop. If you're not sure you, what you want to do, there's lots of different things you can look at and you can put in a degree and it'll tell you the classes you have to take, what you have to do to do that. You can look at different degrees, what they require. Also, your, high, your college transcript is there. So whenever you get ready to go to college, you can go on this page right here, log in, and you can get an unofficial transcript to send in temporarily and you can order an official one to be sent. Over here where it says quick links, these are a lot of things that you need to know. The first thing is HC email. You do need to start, sign into there and activate your HC email. If you're not going to check it often, you can forward it to an email that you check all the time. But get in there and log into it. A lot of things go to that, like student surveys and things like that. And they give away some pretty cool prizes on that. The next link is for Blackboard, which we'll talk about in a second. This HC alert, you do want to go in there and sign up for that because that's what will go to your phone or something. If we have a snow day or anything like that, it'll say no classes or whatever. If you need to reset your password, the HC catalog is here. The student handbook, you do need to look at that, print it. Well, maybe not print it, but read it because there's a lot of rules and regulations. Like on your dual credit forms, it'll say refer to student handbook. And I agree to the terms in the student handbook. So be sure you look at that. And then there's to get you back to the website. Also on this main page here, right next to it is the Blackboard link. If you click that, it'll take you straight to here, the Blackboard link. This is the portal for your online classes and most of your other classes will have some kind of component inside Blackboard. Your tests may be in there, you may have to turn in papers, etc. As soon as you get your username and password, you might want to go ahead and log in. I will tell you that classes quite often don't show up in there until the first day of class. So that Monday, August 24th, if your classes aren't showing up, you need to contact the help desk, the phone number's right here at the top, or email. The help desk is monitored 24, hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Granted, it might take a while if you do it late at night, or if there's a lot of issues, it may take a while for them to get back to you. Sometimes you get lucky and get right through to a person, but quite often you leave a number and they call you back. They are very good about returning calls stuff, and everything when you call is logged. If you have problems with Blackboard, I would always call and report it. They cannot reset a test for you if something like that messes up, but they can log that you called and said the test messed up. Everything you need to know is here in this top thing. It tells you about what you can't do if you need to log in, want to choose your own password, step two down here. It, there's also a whole lot of help things over here. Be sure to check all of those out. There's a link to tutoring there, HC alerts, everything is there. Now back here on the main page again, one more thing I want to show you under students. If you go to students and then you go down to class schedule, you will get this little thing that has three different options. The first one is the semester, the term code. So let's say we're not going to look at fall 2020 because there's not all, we don't have your classes in there yet. We're going to look at fall 19 all, then I'm going to go to Big Spring High School, and I'm going to list all departments. And what I would regularly do is I would put list courses, but it takes a long time, so hopefully I've already got it over here. Yeah, I do. 
this is what shows up. This is from last fall, from fall 19, it tells you up here. There's some good information on this page. The first thing is it tells you the class number and name over here. That little link, if you click it, it pulls up the class syllabus that I was telling you that you need to be sure to read. This tells you the course description, it tells you required textbooks, tells you what your the grading system is, the outcomes of the course, um, attendance, makeup work, et cetera. Everything you need is here. So you can read that and know different things about the class. There's that plagiarism policy I mentioned. So be sure that you go and check on that. You can also read about the instructor by clicking here. It shows their credentialing and things like that. If you're looking for other courses that you want to take, you can go on there and you can like look at fall 2020 online courses in art, for instance, and do that. And you can see that we do have two different art classes that are online. And if you need arts class, maybe you can get into it, maybe you can't. Big Spring High School wouldn't pay for it, and only certain students may be eligible, but that's how you can check. The next page uh, that we need to look at is the hcbigspring.com page. This is my web page where I keep a lot of dual credit information on it. If you just remember hcbigspring.com, you can get everywhere you need to go. The first one that pops down here, dual credit application information. If you click that, you go to this page and this has step by step on how to fill out the Howard College dual credit application. You pull out, click that link that says apply Texas and it's gonna go straight to this site right here. You're gonna click create your account and continue on. If it confuses you a little bit, you can go down here. There's a video I made of me doing an Apply Texas. This video is about a year old, so some things have changed. Not much, a little has. So a few things may be different, but it's worded. There's no text on it. It's all text pops up and tells you what to do. Be sure when you're doing Apply Texas, you use your legal last name and your legal first name also, be sure you put your social security number and be sure it's correct. Uh, it causes real issues for you if you put the wrong thing. I will say in Apply Texas, it doesn't have social security number as a mandatory field. However, if you don't put it, it will not come through to Howard College. It'll go into just a little queue and won't come through. So be sure you put it in, be sure it's correct. If you put the wrong thing, it's gonna cause problems as well. Your Howard College ID is generated from your eight from your social security number and last name and some other things through an algorithm and if it's wrong and we have to change it it messes up a lot of things so be sure you do the right one you can also look down here for step-by-step -step screenshots of different things as well the next little link here is summer 2020 this really won't apply to most of y'all but if there's anybody wanting to take classes who have taken classes previously you can go to this web page and it gives you instructions on how to do that this is the only way that dual credit students can get to summer classes but like i say that won't apply to most of y'all this next one tsi enrollment and requirements this little link that popped out here that says tsi testing is the one you want to go to before you take a tsi you do have to do a pre-test which this video and things here tells you about that the real reason I came to this website is this right here. This is what you need to do before you take the TSI. This is a free TSI web-based study app. If you search AccuPlacer or TSI online, you're probably not gonna get this one. You're gonna get some where they try to charge you. This is a really good site. It's by the people that give it, it's free. You can take tests over and over. It'll tell you at the end what you need to practice on, what you need to, what kind of skills you need to sharpen up before you take it. I suggest you keep taking this until you make a passing score before you take the TSI and you'll be much more prepared for it. And it'll make you where you're not nervous when you take it, you'll have an idea what the test is like. If you're gonna take the TSI, go and look at that. At the top, if you go to dual credit and then we go to dual credit high schools, you see the list of high schools that we have. This little link underneath here says BSHS dual credit presentation. If you click that, that takes you to your web page that has information on Big Spring High School. Now, this little thing right here that shows the list of courses and stuff is pretty cool when it works, but on some browsers, it doesn't work. So if that's not showing up when you go, this, ha this shows the classes, 
the high school course you'll get for it and all sorts of information like that. You can click right here and it will open up a bigger one that you can download and you can read a lot better. So that is a second option for you on that. Now, your contact information for the class of 2022, Taylor Osborne, and there's her email address right there. And the remind, .com, the remind login stuff is right here, what you need for remind. Be sure you get on that so you can get all of the notes that you need for your grade level. And for the class of 2021, Morgan McWilliams, the text, the email address is there and the code for the remind is there. All of this stuff is all that stuff we've already read, so I'm not gonna read that to you again. We go down here, I have the presentation that you just watched, which you can go through and see that, uh, or if you wanna download it and look at it, you can look at that. Now we have the dual credit things that you need to fill out. This is the paperwork for Big Spring High School that you'll need to sign and fill out that I believe the due date was the 26th. And then the next one is the dual Howard College dual credit application. Now this application that's here needs to be filled out by everybody who's a first time dual credit in, uh, student. You'll see it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot you need to do. You need to read and understand this. I'm going to highlight number nine here. Dual credit early admission courses are college level classes. College level courses may include controversial, sensitive, and or adult material. Students are expected to have readiness for college level rigor and content. So make sure you understand that. Right here, this part where it says all college records, really what you ought to do is you ought to X all college records and put your parents or legal guardians. What this does, it makes it easier for them to help you whenever you get ready to go to college and get all your records where they need to go. Then the students can assign and date and then the parent signs and dates. Next is the form that you put the classes that you wanna take on. Uh, your counselor probably has talked to you a little or can talk to you and tell you which ones you're eligible for. Also, all those papers tell you a lot of that. And you'll fill this out. These are the forms you will get back to the counselors. If you took dual credit last year, you only need to fill out this form for Howard College. You do need to do that other one for Big Spring High School as well though. One more thing on this page, if you're here tonight, be sure you go to that this webpage and fill out this form. What this form does is tells, tells us that you're interested in dual credit classes. And what we can do whenever you fill this out, it puts you in a little database and it enters you for some Howard College stuff. I'm gonna give away about 10 or 15 shirts and we're gonna give away some other Howard College stuff. So your odds are pretty good if you go in and fill for this that you'll win something. So fill this form out. Once you've filled it out at the bottom, there's a place where you click submit. It won't let you submit it until you've filled everything out. Be sure you do your email address on here that's good. Uh, if you have a non-school email address, it's actually better to use for college purposes because it, if you don't, if you use the regular one whenever you leave, it causes issues with other things. I think that's most everything that I have. If anybody has any questions or anything, let's go back to here. If anybody has any questions, I and the counselors both are, we're all on here now. If you have anything you wanna know, you can send it in the chat. I think it looks like the counselors have answered pretty much all the questions that have been in there. If you have any other questions, you can ask them. You can unmute your microphone if you want to try asking the question that way as well. Any questions, anyone? This video will be on that website later on, so you can watch it again if you need to ask, us, ask a question. So it's looking like nobody's having any questions. So for fall 20, uh, 2020, uh, we need to do, like, if we did college classes last year, will we need to do the Apply Texas? No, you'll just do the Howard College schedule card, which on the webpage, I'll designate, I'll, tonight, after we get done, I'll change that to make that a little clearer. 
I was meant to do that earlier today and I forgot. You'll only need to do one piece of paper for Howard College, but I do believe you'll still need to do the Big Spring High School agreement, correct, counselors? Yes? Yes, you will still need to, yeah, you will need to do the Big Spring High School one too. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hey, post the remind code for 2022. Uh, I can get it. Oh, do I have it? Okay. Sorry, they're asking. I'm working on it. Hold on. <laughs> I think I've got it on the page. I'm up here. 2022. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm slow. <laughs> so no sophomores going into their junior year like this summer. They can't take any classes. That, that, well, yes, that is correct. If it's an, and the main, regularly they might be able to, but COVID-19 messed up a lot of things on us. And we don't have the answer for students who don't have dual credit readiness yet. So it's really probably not a great idea for a first time student to take an online college course in the summer anyway as their first course, because that's a 16 week course. It's still a regular Howard College course, but it's squeezed into five weeks. And we are only offering online classes this summer. There's no face to face ones. So it probably is just as well this year. Now, next summer, you can do some. It'll be, we'll have other options next summer. Hopefully, hopefully, COVID will level out. Uh, is Miss Osborne or you, how do I get the plan for the kids to graduate um, by their senior year? You know, so we have it laid out of how many classes we have to take each summer one, summer two, fall, summer, stuff like are that. You, are you talking about like you're maybe wanting to get an associate's degree? Yeah, like if okay. they can get or most of their core classes done at least. Come this fall, we're going to have a Howard College counselor assigned to Big Spring High School. And what we'll do at that point is your student will set up a time to talk to them and they'll get their degree plan all together at that time. The It won't really matter that first semester because Big Spring High School only allows a certain amount of classes that first semester anyway. So during the fall, get with the Howard College counselor and we can make a plan at that time. There's even many classes that they can take like over the Christmas holiday and at the end of May and in the summer that you'll still get the dual credit rate for. Okay. Uh, Miss Osborne, when are you going to be the kids? When is it going to be a good time for them to drop off their paperwork to you at the all those forms that we need to have by the 26th? Do you have a certain time or should we email it? Uh, you can email it if you want to, but we'll be available from uh, Mondays through Thursdays from 8 to 1, and then on Fridays from 8 to 12 to drop off paperwork. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions or anything? And also, if you're not comfortable asking a question in front of everybody, you can email it to either me or the counselors and we can help you that way as well. Uh, please forgive any errors or my um, 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 I notice I say that a lot. Uh, this is new for me as well, this uh, way of meeting. So hopefully, I imagine by the end of next week, I'll be a pro at it. Y'all are my second one. So hopefully we'll get it all down. Again, you'll be able to go to that cbigspring.com and watch the video again if you want to. It probably won't be up till tomorrow, uh, but the PowerPoint's there and everything else you need is there as well. Okay, any other questions? If there's no other questions, you're welcome to log off. I thank you for coming tonight. We greatly appreciate it.